What's up everyone, Alex here. It's no surprise that I play a lot of really long games, and a lot of you are probably wondering how I'm able to manage all of these different styles of gameplay. And my answer is, I play a wide variety of games. And if you quickly look at the landscape of Japanese indies and niche titles, there's certainly a lot to take in. And after playing a whole bunch of RPGs recently, I'm so happy to be able to play the Klonoa Fantasy Reverie series, which is a collection of both Klonoa 1 and 2. This pair of platformers are two of my favorite platformers of all time, and I'm so happy that Klonoa is back, to some degree. The producer did say that if many people buy these games, that they'll consider making a follow-up to Klonoa, so here I am making a video with the hopes that you'll check out this pair of games. So, if you're ready, let's just jump right into it. So the very first thing that I noticed when I started playing Klonoa Fantasy Reverie series is that this collection actually is a remake of both games. Now, it's not a Final Fantasy VII style remake, but this is one that makes both games actually look visually consistent with one another. For those who don't know, the original head sprites made out of pre-rendered CG, while the second game was fully 3D. I actually didn't know this until I made this video, but the version of Klonoa 1 in this collection might be working off of the Wii port of the game. For fans of Klonoa 2, you'll also notice that it doesn't sport a cell-shaded style anymore, meaning it doesn't have any black outlines around the characters, that was so representative of this style of artwork. I will say that both games aren't long. They total around 10 hours to beat on average when you take both games together, but it does lend itself to completionist playthroughs. And of course, unlike games that have you collecting 200 flags, this one's a lot more fun to do because it encourages you to explore. I'll get to the gameplay later. Both games also feature a pixel mode, and at first, I thought it was just gonna pixelize everything, and honestly, I'm not too thrilled with pixel modes, even though I grew up from that era. That being said, the pixel mode in these games actually also drops its color depth, which lessens the total amount of colors used, which creates banding. And if you're unfamiliar with the term, banding describes gradients that don't have smooth transitions between one color value to another, which is what causes those very distinct color changes. Ultimately, this creates a retro look while using current gen assets, so it gives you the impression that it came from a bygone era. I actually really like this pixel mode, even though I played the game regularly, and you can always toggle this on and off in the options menu when you access it. By far, one of my favorite parts about Klonoa is the music, and you've been listening to a song called The Windmill Song. This is iconic for me because this is the very first tune you'll hear when you start playing Klonoa 1. And even just listening to the song, it just reinforces the wholesome nature of the games, which, on an aside, does have easy-to-follow storylines with music that complements the platforming and action really well. It's difficult for me not to whistle along with this song because it is so good. Like, as soon as I played, I was brought back to the PlayStation era when I first played this game. I hope listening to the music brings you back to an awesome place as well. I don't typically care much for spoken gibberish languages, but I succinctly remember having a fondness for the spoken dialogue in Klonoa games. They're just so cute, and Klonoa just sounds so adorable. And it's so crazy because even though they're all talking in this gibberish talk, you can feel the emotion coming from the voice acting. And I know it might sound like a far stretch given that you can't really understand what they're saying, apart from what it says in the dialogue boxes, but there's some really powerful stuff if they're able to convey so much emotion even without saying actual words. But in my opinion, what really sells both Klonoa games to me is its gameplay, and it has a very interesting take on your typical platformer action game. So for one, Klonoa has the power to use these rings, and this ring can do a lot. So for one, it has a limited range, and so it can only really grab enemies. Again, it's, it's grab, it's not like attack enemies immediately in front of you. And what happens is while you have an enemy grabbed, there's a couple of things you can do. 
One, you can throw this enemy in any direction, whether it's for defeating enemies or hitting out of the way objects. And number two, you are required to have an enemy whenever you want to execute a double jump. Fortunately, there always seems to be enemies in the areas where you need them. But for folks who are used to having access to a double jump all the time, just remember that you need to grab an enemy to do so. There is a slight float that'll help you a little if you're a bit short on your jump, but of course, it's not gonna save you from falling into a hole, and if you fall in a hole, you lose a life. That's just how it is. One small thing is that if you fire the ring, it does not autocorrect when there is a change in elevation. So for example, if an enemy is traveling up a slope and you're at the bottom of it, you might find that your ring actually misses the target. That being said, there is an easy mode that makes the ring distance travel even further, as well as make the damage you receive much more forgiving. I highly recommend this easy mode for people who are too used to newer games, and I think it'll actually improve your experience with Klonoa. And keep in mind, I'm not knocking anybody's skills, it just makes the gameplay feel a bit more pleasant. I was really surprised how short the distance is with the ring when I first played it, but of course since I'm just settling back into a gameplay style that I haven't played in a very long time, I eventually got used to it. I also want to add that there is a second player option in the game where you can help with jumps, but I find that passing the controller to be a more worthy substitute so that both players can get the full experience. So I think I made a really good case why you should try out Klonoa Fantasy Reverie series, perhaps some of the best platforming action you'll have this year. This incredible collection retails for $39.99 and will be available on July 8th on PS4, PS5, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, Series X and S, and PC. But I am kind of curious, have you played Klonoa before? Do you still have it? Are you excited at the possibility of it getting a sequel? Post your thoughts in the comments below and let's talk about it. And if you really like this video, please consider joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash backlogbattle. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.